welcome to Jack of All Trades training, where I try to prepare you for your certification exam one topic at a time. This video is going to cover limits and fits. Um, a fit refers to the clearance or overlap between uh, two mating parts. So the fit determines if two parts um, slide or rotate relative to each other, or if they're at uh, as, as act as a single part, like a gear uh, shrunk onto a shaft or something like that, and really how it's made. So first question I have for you is, what are the three basic types of fits? So three basic types of fits are a clearance fit, a transition fit, and an interference fit. So the clearance fit means that between two parts that there's actually, if we have um, our shaft, let's say, and that shaft is machined down to a certain size, and then we're going to place a, a bushing or something on the end of it. If the bushing or whatever we place on the end of that shaft If there is a tolerance or an allowance, or there's a room in here, this area has a gap or a void. That means that it is a clearance fit. Now, an interference fit is the opposite of that. An interference fit would mean that the actual shaft size would be larger than the bore diameter. And this would be achieved with either some kind of force or applying heat or uh, cold in some instances to, to, to make the fit. The third one here is one that I see a lot of people get a little bit confused about, and that is a transition fit. So what a transition fit means is that the shaft and the and the hub or whatever bearing, whatever we're fitting on the shaft, the shaft and the hole, are actually can be um, either an interference or a clearance fit. It's basically kind of a size for size, but it doesn't matter one way or another. It can be slightly loose and have slight clearance fit, or it can have a slight interference fit. Um, the reason for doing that, it really just comes down to um, machining and, and saving of costs. Um, so if you're not specifying something and you're drilling a hole and then you're uh, turning something on a lathe and they need to fit, maybe you have like two bins and you grab one part from, from this bin and one part from this bin and they just push together and it's fine. It's a sliding fit. And then you grab the next two and then you go to put them together and you have to actually apply force to get them together. So that would be an example of a transition fit. Now, transition fit is always going to be close. You have, have a transition fit that's a huge clearance fit or a huge interference fit. It's always going to be very close to that. So the next question is, what are the two systems used for determining which part should have a control dimension and which one should be sized based on the other? And the answer is a whole basis system and the shaft basis system. So what they're saying here is um, if you have a whole basis system, it's saying that you drill the hole to two inch and then the hub that you're going to apply to the to the shaft is the one that you're going to apply the tolerance to somewhat to say, you know, this one needs to be a clearance fit so that it slides on. Um, the shaft basis system is saying that I have a shaft that is, say, three inches and then I have to machine a hub and I'm applying the tolerance or the dimensions to the hub in order to mate with the shaft. So they don't really do it with the, with the both. So the next question I would ask you, knowing that there's two different systems for applying um, tolerances to the fit, what which of the two systems is more common? So the basis hole system and the basis shaft system, which one do you think is more common? And the answer, answer is the whole basis system. And the reason for that is that um, in, in most machining processes, it's a lot easier to designate a hole size. We have standardized size for drill bits and reamers and parts that are going to be punching out a hole, but we don't necessarily have like a standard setting on a lathe to make it so that it's always the same size. It's a lot easier to vary the diameter on a lathe when you're turning something down than it is to drill and then try to bore out a hole or apply apply that um, tolerance to, to a hole so that you get the certain fit. So that's the reason why the whole basis system is often used. However, 
there are you know exceptions to that and they do have both systems for a reason. So this is just a quick kind of drawing or sketch of um, some of these fits and, and some of the terms that apply. So the fundamental deviation is from our basic size, how small the shaft will be, or from our our, um, our basic size, how large, how much larger the hole could, could deviate. So that fundamental deviation has to be smaller than whatever the tolerance grade is. And the, the international tolerance grade or the IT number is going to be set again through some of these uh, engineering tables and charts that you'll look at. And we're going to dive a little bit into that in a minute. But for the basic hole size, you have your minimum size, which is how small the hole can be, and then the maximum size that it can be. And then on the shaft, you have a minimum size and a maximum size. So that those are all pretty straightforward terms. So what we have here is we have two different charts or tolerance charts or fit charts, sorry. Uh, this one is for the whole basis system and then this one is for the shaft basis system. And so what really what this is uh, showing us is this line that comes across the middle here represents that basic size that I was talking about. So in this case, if it was a basic hole size of, um, again, I'll just use that, that number, two inches. The bottom, it's it really what we're saying here is this um, this deviation from the basic size down to this part and this range here is for the the um, the shaft size. So how how large that shaft can be. So in this chart, you'll see that the small numbers, they're small letters. So here is a small c. This one is a lowercase d. This one is a lowercase f. I'm, I apologize because the writing is a little small there. But all of these ones here that we have, these are all representative of the shaft. Okay, so this is the piece that's going to be fitting inside the hub. And you see that these blue, blue, blue. And then there's a point here where it skips. And the blue actually starts to fill in all of these overlapping ones. Okay. And so what that's representing is saying that the shaft is going to uh, be a much smaller than the basic size. So this would be larger, smaller. So we're going to be the maximum shaft size could be much smaller than the basic size, giving us that clearance. And then as we step up in our fit range, we're going to get closer and closer and closer to that line until we reach this port here. So this section in here is our transitional fit area. And so that transitional fit area is really um, where it can be, it can overlap in, in different directions, but it's basically size for size. Then when we get into our interference, now we're looking at the shaft, the range of the tolerance of the shaft has to be larger than the hole size. So we have to apply some kind of a force or heat or something to it. And then you can see here also that it's um, the, the hole size is saying that it can be slightly larger than the basic size. And then as we get and we have a, a tighter and tighter uh, clearance, it's going to that range that the whole size can be kind of slowly tapers off until you get to the end here. And then what it's saying is basically for the transition fit all the way to the interference fit that our whole size needs to be within a certain parameter of that fit. So now the this um, whole size has to be in this in this kind of range here. All right. And then when we look at the shaft basis system, it's basically the exact same thing. And if you look at this chart and you just took it and you flipped it upside down, it's basically the exact same looking chart. Just that you have to remember that the shaft is lowercase. So a C, an F, et cetera, et cetera, where the whole is uppercase, so it would be a large C or a large F. So when you're looking at those charts and you're I'm trying to understand it, you see here for the whole capital C, capital D, capital F, right? But the shaft size is lowercase h, lowercase lowercase b, lowercase b. Okay, so those are really um, those are those are IP type questions. All right, so now we we understand that these fits and they have this, but there's no actual numbers on any of these. It's just an explanation that these these are our clearance, um, these are our clearance dimensions, uh, transition, and then interference dimensions. So how do we know what those actually are? We have to reference it on charts like this. So when depending on what type of fit that we're actually trying to make, there's different um, 
there's different bore sizes and then they're going to have all the different fits with how much deviation that you can have inside of the dimensions to make that fit the the equivalent fit so these are all engineering tables that you would actually have to reference these numbers and look at it nobody's going to ask you to memorize any of this any of these numbers just that um the basis size the, the larger the basis size the more variation you have so if you have like the same free running fit and you see this um, 25 millimeter, you have a variation of 0 0.052 to, to zero. But then when you get up to 250, you have a deviation of 0.86. So the larger the dimension, the more range that you have to make an equivalent size or equivalent uh, type of fit. So the clearance fits that we talked about, they can be broken down into six categories. What are those categories? And it's kind of popped up already. And the answer is uh, loose running. So that's for any kind of pivot or latch or something where we actually want it to be able to clearly move. Then you have free running. That's a plane bearing or something that needs to take some type of a radial load, but we want to allow for some type of lubrication or grease to get through and around it. Then you have close running. And the example for close running would be like a machine tool spindle or something where we need to make sure that it's a precision location. It can't move on us, but that it, it is able to turn. Then a clearance fit can also be into a sliding fit. So that's something like a, like a gear sliding on a shaft or a clutch disc pack kind of moving back and forth. Um, then we also have close tolerance or close clearance. So that would be your push or slip, meaning we have, it's very close, it's, it's, uh, but it won't just necessarily just drop on. We actually have to push or, or give a little bit of a tap with a, with a soft face hammer to get it. And then you have the locational clearance. So this one would be roller guides or some kind of shaft guide or um, some kind of pin that would um, set a gearbox casing together in a certain orientation to, to, to house those bearings, things like that. So on that point, we actually can break down some more. So those are, so these ones here, those are our clearance. Okay, but then we can also look at, we have a different type of fit. And the next one was our transition fits. Okay, so the transition fit can be broken down into two. Those ones can be broken down into similar or it can be uh, the transition fit can be fixed the difference being similar means that uh, it's just a little bit looser um, whereas the fixed is a lot more uh, size for size so it's just when looking at those bar charts that i was showing you the the two uh, cute uh, squares on it would be very similar for the fixed <laughs> similar for the fixed but not very really similar no similar it's just a, a finer tolerance to set the fixed and then the last one that we have is our um our interference fits and for our interference fit we have three we have our press fit we have a driving fit and then we have our force fit okay so force fit is the one where we have to do some sort of heat and apply force uh, simply just applying force isn't practical and will probably pick up or destroy the fit um, the driving force is usually that you have um, maybe a little bit of heat or, or some kind of um, shrink fit as well as, as uh, using a, some kind of force to drive them together. And then the press fit is one where you don't need to, it's an interference fit, but you don't need to actually apply heat for the shrink fit. So um, there's six clearance fits, then there's the two transition fits, similar and fixed, and then in interference you have press driving and force fit. And on those charts, you'll actually be able to see what kind of range those um, those will be so that uh, on those IT numbers to apply on the charts to figure out um, when you measure things, well, what kind of fit actually is this and what it would be the best method for applying this kind of fit? Do I need to use heat or um, can I just use pressure through a, a press of some sort? So that's it for uh, limits and fits. Um, I hope that you got something from this one. Uh, this one was uh, a lot of fun putting together. Um, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos and comment. Let me know um, if, this, if these videos are helping you and if there's something I can do maybe that makes, could make the videos better for you. Um, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for uh, joining me today.